the built up space in India is almost 25 to 27 billion square feet. So if the same demand for houses, factories, and townships go for the next 18 years to come, by 2030, India would have 100 billion square feet. I don't know, that's why we are all here. Where is the land, where is the energy, and where is the water, and where is the other resources to cope up with the entire opportunities? So as far as we from the Indian Green Building Council are concerned, what are the challenges, the built environment, and as an individual citizens, what is that we face? So there could be n number of challenges. The top four or five challenges, what we thought of discussing it today in this workshop is, it's completely the lifestyle changes. So we never used to have a tapped water 15 years or 20 years ago. Right now, we are talking about the rain showers in majority of the villas and the majority of the high-end green apartments or whatever the apartments we are calling. In fact, some of the villas, they wanted to have even the cars, wanted to take them as close to their bedrooms, actually. So we are completely, the lifestyle is completely changing. Comfort levels. I'm not here to say that we need everywhere air conditioners. So I would love to be in the, mostly in the naturally air-conditioned space, but nevertheless, Hyderabad, when we came in 2002, the temperatures on the same day was not so hot. So every year, if you turn the newspaper on the front page, they say that this is the highest temperature recorded in Bangalore, this is the highest temperature recorded in Hyderabad. In the last 100 years, it has become the headlines. So what I try to tell is the comfort level also varies from person to person, and what kind of a background, or what kind of an office, or what kind of a house we have. And everything is becoming contemporary. Earlier, when we used to ask for chapatis or rotis from South India, we had to go to the North Indian restaurant 30 years ago. So whereas now, the Chinese food, the continental food, the music has become contemporary. The architecture has con become contemporary. Same is the case with the built environment as well as the designs. Affordability. So my own father, when he wanted to take a home loan, he waited for almost four years before getting retired. Right now, the young generation, even before they draw their first month salary, they wanted to have a home on their own. So the affordability of the home loans or car loans and everything is everything has completely changed. So this is all good news, but that offers a lot of challenges. So this also throws open a lot of opportunities for us. How do we take it up? So this is going to put a lot of, lot of demand on any resources, right from the land, water, energy, bricks, cement, steel, whatever you name it. So before getting into the what we have done, I would like to have a very glimpse of what is happening, what has happened in the last 10 years or 12 years. From the Indian Green Building Council, this is a part of CII, Confederation of Indian Industries, a 120 years old Apex Industry Association. So the green building's word was not so popular when we started in year 2000. So we engaged the entire stakeholders, the governments, architects, end users, manufacturers, consultants, everybody, institutions also, so we have framed what is the vision of this Indian Green Building Council. We are not worried about only few buildings which are going green here and there. So we wanted to enable sustainable built environment for all. In the process, India, we wanted to facilitate India becoming a world leaders in the sustainable environment by 2025. In fact, there are a lot of emerging green building councils in Vietnam, Sri Lanka, and Taiwan, and the SARC countries. So they are all looking at IGBC. When we say IGBC, it is not only the permanent employees of IGBC. All of you sitting here from this hall and away from the hall, we always consider them as a part of this entire stakeholders. As doctor was mentioning, this is a building, our own headquarters building in Hyderabad. All of you are most welcome to visit our center whenever you are staying in Hyderabad or today, tomorrow, anytime you are most welcome. So this is the India's first platinum rated green building, which has been inaugurated by then president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. So we are almost 10 years old in this building. So November 13th, we got the rating. We moved in on November, but officially we got inaugurated on 14th of July 2004. We are almost 10 years. So what it started as one building with only meager 20,000 square feet. We in IGBC are privileged and proud to say that India has very recently crossed a 2,000 mark. 2,000 registered projects are there from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Calcutta to Kutch. Another uniqueness about India is though it is not so vast in terms of land area with respect to North Americas or South Americas or Africa, India has five distinctive climatic zones. So that's what I was discussing with Professor Sitaram. The temperature here is very, very hot. When you go to Bangalore on same day evening, tomorrow the temperatures are much different, hardly 400 kilometers. So the, what the design is good for me in Hyderabad, I cannot take it to Chennai or Mumbai or to Bangalore. 
So that is a uniqueness as well as this throws home a lot of challenges. So India not only has 1.2 billion people, our chairman, when he started the movement 20 years ago, he said that in the next 20 years, we should, every Indian in this country should have contributed at least one square feet of built-up space going green. So very recently, we crossed that milestone also. India has 1.4 billion square feet going green all over the country. So India is a cricket-crazy country. You would have heard all these IPL matches all over, all over the place. So this is not a cricket scorecard. This is a scorecard we are maintaining ever since we started the movement. I will not go into the details. So now we have won the entire CEOs and the top management of every government organization and the corporates. They wanted to construct whatever they are doing it, be it a corporate office, their own factories, their own bungalows, their own apartments, everything they decided they'll go green. In the last 12 years, we almost trained 14, 18,000 professionals. So every 15th day, there is a training program happening across the country. So we have worked with almost 120 or 130 product manufacturers. We have transformed the entire products in bringing in more and more greenness. And then we have 1,400 organizations as members. That is a very unique strength about Indian Green Building Council. So similar to the software exams, we do have an IGBC accredited professional exam. So wherein 1,000 more professionals have been cleared in the last two years, and then they are the one who are hand-holding. So, so what is this green building all about? So like what we have five fingers in our palm, it is not that my building should be only look-wise good, or energy-wise much better, or water-wise it is good. As I said, like what we have five fingers in our palm, the building design, and the building operations should meet all the five environmentally sensitive parameters like what kind of a site I have chosen, what kind of measures I have taken to save water, what kind of measures I have taken to ensure that energy consumption is much, much lower, material and resources. Last but not the least is buildings are meant for people, not for the energy or the water or the metering alone. So the indoor environmental quality is all the more important. So if you go into the details why green building has become a big hit, or why people are able to embrace it. So this is the reason. Our own great-great-grandfathers, they, uh, they went ahead with the significance of the five elements, what we call it as the panchaputas or five elements of nature. So even now, however modern we are, we worship Mother Earth, we worship fire, we worship water. So it is beyond, uh, beyond, beyond uh, the natural resources. We consider them as a god or goddess. So by going green, all these 2,000 projects are able to showcase the tangible benefit of bringing down the energy by 40%, bringing down the water consumption on a conservative figure of 20 to 30%. Many of the buildings are able to showcase almost 40% to more. Apart from the energy and the water reduction, all these building designs, they are able to bring in fresh air and bring in daylights and provide views to the entire occupants so that the happiness index or a health quotient of the people living in a green home or working in a green office, they are able to be much better than their own neighbors who are, have used a conventional, conventional systems. So this is about the tangible and intangible benefits. So we are also measuring and documenting the energy performance even after the certification is over, actually. So a million square feet of a green building, they are able to save almost 15,000 megawatt of energy, 12,000 tons of CO2 reduction, as well as the water reduction to the tune of 45,000 kiloliters, we almost diverted 500 tons of construction waste going to a landfill. Otherwise, it would have reached a landfill, whereas we are able to give them a meaningful life. And then we encourage renewable energy, which Germany is a pioneer in renewable energy. We would love to hear from them. And then, in fact, very recently, we went to Stuttgart for our World Green Building Council. And then there we saw a lot of, lot of infrastructure, including the Bosch, the parking area in Stuttgart, the entire roof is covered with solar PV, which amounts for a megawatts of capacity. So here also we have done a bit. So 3.5 megawatt of renewable energy sources has been installed in these green buildings, which has gone green with us. So this is all about the title also, is all about public awareness. So I would like to highlight, so whenever my time is up, you raise your hand, I can stop there. So here, as far as the water is concerned, we also closely work with various NGOs and other research institutions also. So now we are, the people are able to be sensitized on the virtual water. If I'm wasting a cup of coffee, it is not only a few milligrams, milliliters of the cup, water or a coffee going waste. 
So in order to bring a cup of coffee or a tea to our table, it takes almost 130 to 140 liters of water, right from the harvesting to the transportation and the preparation and coffee or a tea coming to our table. So if somebody is wearing a jeans, it has almost consumed 8,000 liters of water. So this is what we call it as a virtual water. We wanted to sensitize on, sensitize on this amount of quantity of water we have consumed in these, these manufacturing or any, any kind of a product or a produce. So here we are familiar with a 3R principle. Try to reduce the water consumption by going in for ultra low flow fixtures or try to reuse in the landscape or a cooling tower application wherever the human contact is not there or try to recharge. So this we are familiar with. Now the new concept is coming in refuse. There are a lot of dry composting WCs and urinals are coming up. So which started in our own center, the waterless urinal, what you see, has been installed for the first time in India in our own center in Hyderabad. Now many offices and many homes are going for these kind of dry composting fixtures. So these are all the live pictures of ultra low flow and flush fixtures installed in our green homes or green office spaces across the country. So whenever we are trying to source the material, so we also encourage to source them within a 400 kilo, ki, kilometers of radius from the project site. As long as without compromising on the safety and other environmental concerns, if you are able to find an alternate material within this 400 kilometers, try to source it as closest to the project site. So that is what we call it as a regionally harvested material. And then any civil material, whenever you go for a innovation or a renovation or for a new greenfield project site, try to look in for a material which has a very high recycle content. The steel or a cement or a block or a carpet or a whatever, whatever material which goes inside a building, please ask a question, what is the greenness, whether it could be a post-consumer or post-industrial waste, what has gone inside. So these are the tentative or indicative numbers which I quoted here. So I would like to take you through the case studies instead of putting it on, it is on a Saturday afternoon, I don't want to go into the kind of a physics or a science. So we, I wanted to show more of a colorful pictures, which has been right now as we are talking, which is fully functional and operating all over India. For example, we all know that the solar hot water system, which generates hot water, which is used for a dom domestic application. Whereas in this building, they are using the hot water generated at say 60 to 80 degrees for their air conditioning. Can you believe it? In Chennai, down south and 400 kilometers from here, in this particular project is one of the world's greenest building. So the entire hot water generated goes into a vapor absorption machine. If somebody is from a mechanical or electrical background, they know. Otherwise, you don't worry about that. It is a black box or you Google it, VAM, vapor absorption machine. The hot water generated by the solar hot water system goes into as a prime motive force and then which brings in as chilled water at say 12 degrees or 14 degrees centigrade. So the entire 30,000 square feet of office space is cooled by the hot water generated. Based on the success, in fact, they have gone for an excessive capacity of installing parabolic concentrators. So in order to explore for various other applications. So some of the places like Bangalore, Pune and Dehradun on the northern part of the India, it doesn't require air conditioners throughout the years. So we are also encouraging the passive cooling as well as the passive architecture. For example, this particular project, what you see is in Dehradun. So they have a huge factory which is in elect the plot itself is in a rectangular size. So they buried a huge hume pipe at four meters. So they're drawing the fresh air and then it gets into my office space. So go for a wind towers or there are a number of possibilities are there coming up, including the geothermal, which can save a lot of, lot of energy and bring in better efficiencies. So many of the smart cities or an IT parks are a huge developments like this, which has million square feet. So they're all going in for the district cooling systems. When water can be generated and distributed all over from a centralized location, electricity can be generated in one location distributed all over. Why should I have an individual machines like this in order to take care of the individual needs? So these district cooling systems generate the chilled water in the central zone and it goes to all the buildings and all the homes in and around. So they are able to achieve a better efficiencies when compared with the individual machines at individual level. So again, this is another in innovation or a path-breaking technology. Though it is not new to us, many of us would have studied right from our college days, radiant cooling, but right now it is happening. So before you cast the slab, as you could see it in this, though the photograph is not so great, the red color, the red color pipes are buried, the HTP pipes are buried 
in order to take care of the chilled water which will go all over the place on the roof. And we call this as the radiant cooling. It's happening right now at Infosys campus in Hyderabad. So they are able to save almost 40 to 50 percent when compared with their own campus building which is not having this particular technology. Next is on high performance wall. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we had only the red color brick. We never had much options. Right now, as I'm talking to you, there are 20 options available for only for the wall. Another 15 options for your roof, the glass, whatever, whatever goes inside the envelope. So try to use the high performance envelope by going in for these measures. So nowadays, you are getting a blocks uh, which can have a, what do you call, These kind of a blocks has an insulated board, insulated board in between. So it has become a plug and play actually. So you need not build a masonry wall, then bring in the insulation board and go in for one more layer of a wall. Now you pick it up and you can stack it up as simple as possible. So going in for a double glazed glass, which brings in only the light to into my office space or a home, not the heat. So these are the innovations which is coming up in the entire envelope measures.